Judy Chicago, The Dinner Party. Iconoclast Judy Chicago changed the course of women's history. Her extraordinary 1975 masterwork, The Dinner Party, still speaks volumes today. It moves us with the power and accomplishments of women in history. Long, formal tables unite a trio of 13 elaborate place settings. They form a perfect triangle of achievement. I first discovered this powerful work in the Brooklyn Museum. It's a life changer. That's because this work reaches deep into archetypes to move the viewer with meticulous detail. Viewers delve deep into women's history. It draws you in and envelops you. That's because this piece spotlights the impact of 39 game changers. It's as meaningful as it is momentous. Iconoclast Judy Chicago's work, The Dinner Party, celebrates women in history. It does that by showing the accomplishments of 39 individuated women represented by place settings at an incredible triangular dinner party. Each one uses the craft work of ceramics, embroidery, and many other beautiful feminine artworks. It's the kind of work that draws you in and teaches you as you're looking at the piece. Specifically, it teaches you about women and what they've achieved in history. It was first inspired when Judy Chicago took a European history class and was told that the teacher, an acclaimed professor, couldn't think of a single woman's accomplishment in the history of Western civilization. She set out to prove that wrong, and she certainly did with this masterpiece, The Dinner Party. Judy Chicago knew otherwise. In 1960, Judy Chicago studied with an esteemed European history professor at UCLA. She asked about the accomplishments of women, but her teacher couldn't name any women of note in the history of Western civilization. This was at a time when women's studies didn't exist. In fact, intellectuals and influencers of that era chose not to acknowledge women. There was no history of women, no artists of merit among women. It was as if women had no lasting impact on the world. Judy Chicago knew otherwise. This is how feminists are made. They ascend from the rubble of disregard and ignorance. Ignore an ember long enough, and you'll find yourself with a house on fire. Chicago fought the omission of women from the ranks of societal achievement. She did this with art. It was the end of her search for the women of history. This process itself made history and changed the stakes for women in art. That's what makes Judy Chicago more than a hero. She's an icon. The Wings of Women The dinner party unites three long tables. These are the wings of women. Each table represents a historical period. So, the first wing spans prehistory to classical Rome. That means it covers goddesses and historic personages. Examples include Sophia, the concept of divine knowledge, Sappho, Nefertiti, and Lucretia. There are some controversial elements here. For instance, Kali is most often called the Hindu goddess of destruction. Women of power are often perceived and portrayed as harmful. Even today, power can frame a woman as fearsome. That's why Chicago portrayed Kali as a compelling beauty. She reframed Kali's many arms. They aren't so scary in this setting. It seems they seek an embrace on the plate. Kali's symbolic arms rise up the tablecloth for a dancing tickle rather than a threat. Her power remains undeniable here, but she's no longer the destroyer. If anything, Kali resonates the power of love in the dinner party. Christianity to the Reformation. The second wing of women represents the rising social constraints of early Christianity. It spotlights limitation. Family roles and community pressure create more and more restrictions for women, but restraints on their bodies had the most impact on their everyday experience. Chicago represents these encroaching strictures with the runner designs and the dinner party. The imagery climbs the runners to reach up to the place settings in this wing. Tortula presents a perfect example of such a setting. She was ahead of her time in gynecological study and practice. A renowned doctor, author, and professor Tortula wrote the book, Diseases of Women. It shared her vast experience with pregnancy, menstruation, sterility birth, and midwife practices. 
This tome continued to aid in women's health for 700 years after her death in 1097. At her funeral, the procession behind Tortula's casket ran two miles long. This beloved woman made a difference. She made history. The plates also shift into more dynamic styles here. Take the glorious Tortula. Thanks to a lack of women's history, you may not have heard of Tortula. This points to one major purpose behind the dinner party. It teaches women's history. This didn't exist before Judy Chicago came along with her masterpiece. So, the dinner party creates a meta-accomplishment. It validates and honors unsung yet impactful women. But this artwork also places Chicago in the annals of women's history. In fact, it puts her in a leadership position. Women's Revolutions The third wing crosses through the American Revolution to the Women's Revolution. But the true historical resonance of this period might be rage. Case in point, Mary Wollstonecraft. She wrote her famous treatise, A Vindication of the Rights of Women, in a fury. It was her reaction to visiting France during the Revolution. Their rallying cry for freedom included fraternity. That word, fraternity, speaks only to men. So Wollstonecraft returned home to pour that anger into the book that made her famous. In it, she declared that until women were equal to men, human knowledge couldn't progress. Wollstonecraft continued to fight against male tyranny until her deathbed. Then she proclaimed, I have thrown down the gauntlet. It is time to restore women to dignity and make them part of the human species. This tragic death graces the back of her runner in the dinner party. It's the dark and bloody bed scene. But the front revels in the fine embroidered embellishment of Wollstonecraft's day. It's perfect symbolism for women of her day. Forced to hide their rage and pain, they still maintained a perfect facade. Scenes at the top of her front runner show Wollstonecraft teaching young girls. Her embroidered words say they're entitled to an education a revolutionary claim at the time. The runner's stitching holds a meticulous power over the viewer. It's intricate and obsessive in detail. That lies in stark contrast to the wild force of the plate's abstract vibrance. There's rage in that plate, while uptight neuroses runs through the stitches. These two sides of Wollstonecraft's pain tells a story that time will never forget. The Brooklyn Museum. The dinner party found the most fitting location in the Brooklyn Museum. That's because it's the home of the Elizabeth Sackler Center for Feminist Art. Thanks to Judy Chicago, this floor also holds its flagship example. Judy Chicago, The Dinner Party, was written by Lady K. Flo and read by me, Michael J. If you like this podcast and want to hear more like it, the greatest compliment you can give is to tell a friend. And subscribe to Lady K-Flow on Apple, Google, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Thanks. Visit LadyKFlo.com for all the goods. That's L-A-D-Y-K-F-L-O dot com.